Hello and welcome to another mid-month development update where we bring you the very latest news on Cardano development. Joining me today are Nigel, Kevin and John. But before we dive in, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell to get the very latest alerts on what's happening. Now, February was a major release. John, perhaps you want to tell us what was in it and why it mattered. It was foundational for our June hard fork where we have some really exciting things coming and I've touched on them before. Uh, things like improvements for, for Plutus and pipelining. So just to recap on what we had in 134, this foundational release, we had node optimizations, RAM optimizations, computational optimizations. We had a new CDDL format. We had a CLI tool to be able to uh, figure out uh, exact script costs, which has really helped devs. And we indeed had the new leadership schedule tool, so you could find out exactly when your slot was coming up. Um, and I'm happy to say we received quite a bit of feedback from the community um, and the slot leader schedule tool has been received a massive positive feedback and indeed um, the built-in calculator for cost seems to actually be more accurate than some of the third-party alternatives out there. So I think we've done a good job there. I'm excited for what's coming up in June. And Kevin, of course, since that node upgrade, we've pushed out another one. Perhaps you can tell us about that. So we've pushed out uh, node version 134.1. We were so proud of the mempool tracing feature that we'd introduced, uh, that we enabled it by default for all our users. Uh, but it turned out that actually some people didn't want mempool tracing. So we've released a new version of the node that has disabled that by default. It gives the user the option of choosing whether or not to use uh, this great new feature. And it also includes uh, some additional node metrics that the SPOs uh, wanted that were missing in the 134.0 release. So it's a solid improvement. It's got all the features, all the benefits of Node version 134.0, just these two small changes. And we recommend that stakepool operators uh, upgrade to this version now. And Nigel, of course, we're only just out of the February release, but already the work has begun for June, hasn't it? Could you tell us more about that? I think a lot of work has been done already for the June, June hard fork. We're now uh, getting to the point where we code complete and we think, well, that's miles away. So what happens next? Well, we've got a hell of a lot of testing to be done, integration testing, QA testing, component testing. And then the next stage for us is to move into a public test now where we can then get our community members to help us test that release. And it's great because we've got a good selection of different uh, DAP developers and DAPs that are out there that can actually help us test and make sure that we have delivered on the benefits that we're expecting for the June hard fork. Following that, as we approach May, we then get involved with our exchanges and there's a lot of other work that goes on with them to make sure that they're ready as well as our, all of our other downstream components. And also before June, John will also be looking at further parameter changes to improve the uh, performance of the network. One on the horizon, I believe. Maybe I could just quickly recap on some of the things we've done already uh, this year in terms of changing network parameters. So we've taken the block size from 64 kilobytes all the way up to 80 kilobytes, and that's a 25% increase. And on the Plutus side, for our smart contracts, we've given 40% more memory resources. So it used to be 10 million units and now 14 million units. And let's not forget, as well as at a transaction level, where we have limits around how much uh, resources a Plutus transaction a smart contract can use in, in memory and CPU, we also have block level limits. So it's important that we scale the block level limits so that the transaction level increases we've already provided, we get the biggest bang for the book there. So we want to make sure that we expand the block level limits too. So we've already taken them from 50 million uh, memory units for the block to 56. And I suspect in this coming epoch, we're going to post an update to take that to 62 million. We had wanted to do this earlier, but we released the node and we wanted to give that time to bed in to make sure everything was running optimally before we made any changes. Again, we're being cautious with these changes, but ultimately we are hitting an average of a change every three weeks. Um, so that's, you know, for a network as, I guess, as sophisticated as Cardano, which has a global uptime approaching 100%, you know, we we have to be careful around rolling out these changes, but I think we're doing so with a relatively aggressive cadence. And just to remind folks, you're going to see not only these changes we've done in these parameters, block size, block level memory units, and transaction level memory units, but you're going to see other changes coming out. We're going to potentially look at not only increasing block size further, but look at 
uh, maybe how big a transaction is allowed to be, how many CPU units are available to Plutus, other economic parameters that we've discussed with the SPOs. So there's a whole bunch of different things we're going to be tweaking and we're going to get the platform to a place where we feel it's operating at an optimal level. Um, and finally, a reminder of why we're doing this stuff, okay? We're doing it to scale the platform so that it has the bandwidth to contend with the demand that's placed upon it. So we want the Cardano platform to scale in time with the demand that it's seeing. And these changes that we've put in up to this point in the year, and indeed the changes we're going to be making uh, for the rest of the year and even into next year, will allow us to, um, to grow out scalability uh, aggressively. And also when we add things like pipelining and layoffs or input endorsers on top, uh, it gives us even more scope to make further changes. So I think I'm feeling quite confident about scaling this out to grow with demand. And of course, that demand is indeed growing. Make sure you check out some of our recent infographics around all the projects building on Cardano. We've got well over 500 projects now building all the way from NFT marketplaces to DEX to Oracles to liquidity solutions. So make sure you check out the latest and have a look at Essential Cardano, our repo, which tries to map the entire ecosystem. Now, Kevin, 1.35 is the next node in the series. A 1.35 follows up on the many new features uh, that we've introduced in 134 uh, by progressing a number of under the hood improvements that are going to be essential for the Vazel hard fork, but which are also essential to enable the parameter updates that uh, John uh, mentioned earlier. And we're keeping a very close eye on the performance of the node so that we still have plenty of headroom uh, to roll out things like block size increases, etc. We're also hoping but we might be able to include some new features uh, that will help uh, SPOs. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But as I said before, don't hold off on your upgrades for Node version 135. Upgrade now to 134.1. It's a great release. It's a solid uh, version. Lots of good features, lots of things that will be great for SPOs. So do that now.